Welcome to X-Connect. My name is Kareem Kanji. Thank you for joining us today. We have a very exciting conversation that's going to take place. We're going to be focusing a lot on music and technology over the next few episodes and weeks. Before we get started, I want to thank a number of our sponsors. First of all, thank you to Hearth TV, uh, the fine folks behind uh, Batman Toronto. Or is it Toronto Batman? Toronto Batman. Toronto Batman. Uh, Batman as well as... As well as thank you to Big Time Design and Communications and, of course, to Third Ocean. Uh, as well as need to thank two wonderful people, Sean Ward, as well as Shadowline Chung, for making sure that everything works. Uh, so, I am excited to introduce to all of you uh, one of Toronto's most colorful personalities. Please welcome to the show, Sammy Union. Hey, how's it going, man? Sup, cuz. Sup, cuz. <laughs> Things are good? Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. This is... Uh... Quite fun. I like no the, uh, the back cave going on here. There you go. Yeah. What's what's with the accent now? All of a sudden, you have an accent. I'm throwing stuff out. Got okay. to impress the ladies. All right. You and the ladies. Yeah. So we are here. You. I mean, you're doing a ton of stuff. Yeah. Um. Obviously, a, a lot of people recognize you from uh, your T-shirt business mm -hmm. uh, called Subcuz. Subcuz. So what's that all about? Why don't we quickly talk about that? Get that out of the way. Okay. Uh, Subcuz is myself and a uh, friend, uh, mm -hmm. DC. And we are the, both the designers and the creators of all the, the different designs. Okay. And uh, it's a t-shirt company. So we wanted something that was fun, something that was chill. Mm -hmm. That's Subcuz. Yeah. So we're just celebrating like hammocks, naps, poutine. That's pretty much it. All right. Nice. Yeah. We'll have to order a t-shirt. Yeah. Third Ocean T-shirt, X Connect T-shirt. Oh, from you. We'll have to have you model it too on the website. There you go. We yeah. can do that. And that'll sell like crazy. Awesome. So we have. We are uh, when this uh, recording gets released. Yeah. It'll be in March. In March here in Toronto. Okay. Uh, is uh, they, there's a festival going on called Canadian Music Week. Correct. Uh, so I thought you know let's talk to some people that are disrupting the music industry. Uh, and, uh, you know, we met quite some time ago mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you're doing a couple of cool things, uh, a, a new thing according to me and, and some things that you've been doing for, for a little while now. Um, so let, let's first talk about a project that you have going on okay. called the Sample Bank. All right. Um, so why don't you tell us all, you know, what is the Sample Bank? And I guess if people watching you, you can go quickly to the site, thesamplebank.com. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the Sample Bank? What's that all about? So basically... Um Samples are bits of music, or it can be a uh, sound, like a vending machine hum, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, bands use them, hip-hop uses them, and it's not just those like musical acts, but it's also like samples are used in advertising. Um, the lightsaber in Star Wars yeah. is two samples combined. Which ones? I'd say a uh, hum of a TV, an old-school TV, and yeah. the feedback from a microphone, and they just mashed them together. So all the lightsabers are that same sound? Yeah, and all that's right. it. So it's just samples are just all kinds of things that you can kind of incorporate into like film, music, commercials. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we're doing is we're asking independent bands to then put up their songs to be sampled as, a, as an alternative to iTunes, say. Because okay. you can put up a song on iTunes and it sells for 99 cents. So a music fan will download it and they, everybody goes home happy, more or yeah. less. But when you put it up for a sample, they, the band still own, retain the ownership and copyright of the sample. Mm -hmm. So you're putting up a song or you, part of your song to be sampled, and that can then be used in hip-hop, and that can open up more doors for you. Um, it can be used in commercials. It can be used in all kinds of different facets. Mm -hmm. So it's an alternative revenue stream than the normal like iTunes uh, band camp for bands. So what was the impetus behind the idea of the sample bank? Um, just well, the, the general frustration because we've we've gotten better at um, in terms of music, we've gotten better at distribution now, right? We have all these avenues for bands, uh, sure, iTunes, Bandcamp, and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But the, there's still a lot of uh, frustration with how these um, sites operate within a lot of the the bands and the music makers. There isn't a lot of opportunity to make a lot of money, and so just listen on the production side. on the production side, yeah, okay. and not just also make money, but also get. Um, Get your name out there, right? Get mm -hmm. like have because the the thing is too, right? Like hip hop. Once people hear the beat, and if they really like the beat, then they get behind it, and that can sure. go a lot further than say like a rock and roll song, right? Because sometimes a rock and roll song will start off slower, and then it'll start. You know what I mean? It kind of evolves. So sample bank is only for like urban music. It's for any of everybody. Okay. Right, but we are because we're we're starting off with urban music just because it's an easier. Um, I guess sell in a sense because mm -hmm. it's harder for we've, we're finding it a little bit difficult 
Because bands are still used to the, the normal paradigm, which is just put up a song, 99 cents, and then you go and home. And someone buy a song. Yeah. So we're asking them to do something that's a little bit outside of the, uh, the norm, right? Mm -hmm. And to put up like the drums from your song, to put up the guitar from your song, and let people sample it, let people build upon that, mm -hmm. and see, come up with some kind of creative. It's also hoping to foster collaboration, right? Cause sure. As the more tools for production from like Skype and like uh, instant messaging and all these things kind of start to f proliferate into the into the music medium, right? You can then you can then create and collaborate with all kinds of people. They don't have to be in the same room anymore. Mm -hmm. And so this is just another. There are, the samples basically are just Lego blocks so that people can can create and build something new. Interesting. And so you don't necessarily come from a music background. No, I'm. Or even uh, a tech background. I'm neither, I'm neither nerd, music nerd or like a tech nerd. I'm just a dude from Scarborough, basically. So I mean, so you know, you're hanging out in Johnny's Burgers, and yeah. this idea comes to you, like, you know, how did that, you know, how did you know? Were you watching much music? Were you listening to, you know, Q107? I don't know. You know, what yeah. were you? What what happened? We said, you know, we need to change something. You know, is there people you know? You know, is your is your dad a huge musician? Like, what's going on? So it wasn't watching much music. I was watching Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Yes. So. All right. Richard and I. Anyway, so yeah, so I was watching Richard Branson. No, continue that. Richard and I. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just leave it there. All right. This will just like go viral and then everyone else can figure it out after that. All right. So, but I was watching Richard Branson and he was talking about um, when he had Virgin Records mm -hmm. and he would have all these bands, uh, Sex Pistols, Janet Jackson, Rolling Stones and stuff like that. So, of course, as part of his uh, record label, he would send these bands on tour. Sure. And the bands would always come back and they would be like always, one of the major complaints they always had was about the flights. The, light, the lighting was this, the food was that, it was terrible, the chairs were all like bunched up. Mm -hmm. He kept a mental list of all these complaints. And all so right. a few years later when he was able to buy up or start up his own airline, he remembered all these complaints from mm -hmm. bands. So he's like, the lighting was, so then they improved the lighting. The food was terrible, so then they got a chef. The chairs were, so then they made better chairs. Mm -hmm. And so... I hang out and I have, I'm lucky enough to have enough friends who are in the music industry, both um, in, at record companies and in bands. Mm -hmm. And I, the same thing, so I just listen to their complaints. You know, iTunes is this, Bandcamp doesn't do this for us, mm -hmm. things like this. And as you hear complaints, complaints are just suggestions. That's what you should be like following up with. Once you hear somebody complain, yeah. that's an opportunity, mm -hmm. right? And so just. Um, getting together with a uh, friend Kareem Awad, we got to we just started kind of kicking around some ideas, and uh, just putting it out there. And because I have, like I said, a number of friends in the industry, uh, both in records and in uh, musicians, we just started kind of pitching it. Took it to South by Southwest, did a mm -hmm. demo, and kind of showed bands. We got a lot of positive feedback, and uh, that's it. We're just kind of keep on going from there. So you're building out the price. Like, is the product available now? If somebody goes mm. to the sample bank, can they start downloading stuff and? We, we're still happen? in like a beta, but people can start uploading their samples. Um, and then as the, the library starts to develop, mm -hmm. um, people will then have more access. Um, and we also have a, a, um, a phone app coming out in the next few months as well, where nice. people can record a sample. So if you're like, if you can hear like a child laughing or crying or yeah. a police siren, anything like that, you can then record it on the go and then upload it. And then and, and, and people would, I guess, They'd go on the sample bank and, you know, it would say baby crying, click here to download. Correct. You click there, you throw in your credit card or PayPal account, whatever it is. Yep. Samples and retail for $99. $99? bucks. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about the business model then. Okay. So... Because I can go on iTunes, like you said, for $0.99. Cents. That's for a song, but to get a sample, though, that's something different. Okay. Right? So, so... Let's talk about that because I don't know, you know, maybe I don't understand or, you know, pe people are watching this and, you know, don't turn off. Okay. You know, uh, but people are this watching. This is getting exciting. Yeah, you know. We just talked about Richard Branson, hanging out with Richard Branson. There you go. Richard and I. Richard and I, yeah. Yes. That's going to be a new meme. Yeah, so. Um, but 99 bucks, so tell me about the business model. You know, how, how does that work? Why would a kid like me, yeah. you know, who, you know, let me just kind of put a fun tune together, pay 99 bucks, or maybe I'm not the market? Okay, well, so if we go, we'll use hip hop as a, a general example because they use a lot of samples. Yeah. So the problem in hip hop and what makes, why, Independent rock and roll has flourished a lot easier because you only need like one guy basically. You can do a lot with Pro Tools, with a different, like, you know what I mean? You can record a lot of music in your own basement, just yourself Absolutely. as a kid, Yeah. right? Independent hip hop is a little bit more difficult and that's why it hasn't flourished as strongly because it's dependent on samples. And to get the good samples, 
you need lawyers who are going to clear the licenses. Okay. So it becomes a very cost prohibitive, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where if you go back to just regular music or rock and roll, you can just kind of do a drum kit. You know I, what I mean? love how you call rock and roll regular music. Regular music, yeah. <laughs> so well, you can My Neil Young fans are going to be very upset at you, yeah. but go ahead. You were hanging out with Neil Young? Neil um, and I? Neil and I. Okay. So, yeah, and so it just becomes, once, as, anyways, once you suddenly get like lawyers involved, you know mm -hmm. then it just becomes cost prohibitive. And even like um, yeah, regular hip hop, like established hip hop acts from Lil Wayne, um, Shad, Shad, for example, they all have to clear these licenses and it becomes part of the um, cost of recording the album, which is again sure. a lot more different than say rock and roll, regular music. So that, so hiring a lawyer, you know, having them talk with the with the labels, the people who own the, the rights to the music, yeah. is obviously more than ninety nine dollars. Correct. You know, so this is something. You know, so this would be something for an independent, like you said, independent artist who wants you know a number of samples for 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 his record. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, and so this would be would be more cost efficient for them. Yeah, and, but it's also beneficial for everybody because it's also okay. an independent band. So. So, so an independent band can put up their drums, they can put up their guitar, all the building blocks of their song, mm -hmm. and then break it up and put them up. And then, so then an uh, independent hip-hop guy, like Shad, yeah. he could come and then say, I like this, this guitar, I'm going to take this guitar. $99 later, yeah. he's got that guitar and he can put it into his song and he's off and running. And so would Shad also then give kudos to, I don't know, the sample bank or ordinary guitar guy? Like how would that? How does that work? Is there is there any, um, you know, anything in in the agreement when someone downloads it that they've got to give? Yeah. So the the sample still belongs to the musician, to the creator. Okay. So they would retain ownership, and so they would get songwriting credit. So if that that's, okay. So if that song got on the radio, yeah. Then they're getting paid. So you're getting actually paid twice because you get paid once for the sample, yeah. And then once again once the song gets on the radio. Okay, so whenever it's played, like yeah. how it is now. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. So it's actually like, so again, it's just going beyond the 99 cent model, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not just putting up a song and then a fan downloads and then enjoys. There's a possibility of your music actually getting out to a f larger audience. So theoretically, Sammy, what you're saying is that I could be, you know, once this mobile app yeah. comes out, I could be, you know, be on the street or whatever and I can hear some really cool tune. Yeah. You know, maybe it's waterfalling or something like that and yeah. I can record it. I can upload it with my account mm -hmm. to the sample bank. Shad goes on a couple of months later, a couple of years later, mm -hmm. and, and hears it and, and, and downloads it uh, for a new song that gets released a few months later yeah. and it gets played on the radio. I'm getting a cut of that 99 bucks, but I'm also going to be getting a cut every quarter, whatever it is, uh, from the song being played on the radio. Yeah. Very, You're very getting out there. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So let me, so let me ask you this. That's why you're hanging out with Neil Young, right? You're getting out yeah, there. Neil and I. Yeah. Um, so... What role yeah. has technology played in the ability for something like the sample bank to even exist? Well, it's the, it's the tools of production. Everything's kind of trickling down now, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're shooting like stuff right now, yeah. right? You and I, right? Now we've moved on from Richard Branson to you and I. Yeah. Uh, but that's the thing. Now people have the ability to create and anybody has the ability to create and not just like back in the day, we used to, it was very cumbersome to like shoot a video like this. Mm -hmm. Now it's a lot easier. Right, and as the tools of production continue to trickle down, mm -hmm. the the ability for people to um, to edit and to create and to fashion things is also going to grow too. The talent will go up as well. So we just say that the creation of music is now because of the ability to access, yeah, you know, whether it's hard tools like this or whether it's using, um, you know, publishing tools like like very social media sites. Uh, has really democratized the creation of music? That's a good way to put it. That's a classy way to put it, too. Did you like that one? I like that. That was very classy. But that's the, but that's the beauty of the system now, is that now... This, it's the beauty and the curse, because anybody and everybody can create. Everybody yeah. can contribute, right? And the internet basically just boils down to two people, either the creators or the consumers. People mm -hmm. just go on the internet, they want to watch a YouTube video, hopefully of like two handsome fellows like ourselves. Sure. Or they create the videos. Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting, you know, someone like a Matthew Ingram from Giga Ohm had said that we're, we are all media yeah. now. Um, and I, I guess someone like yourself can say we're all musicians now. The ability to create, to create music, and, and not only that, but the ability to not necessarily create music, but create samples and, and, and create some income off of that. Well, it's not even that we're like um, creators, we're industries now. Mm -hmm. Each one of us is an industry. 
Um, you could, there isn't, you're not bound by these, you're not bound or pigeonholed by these little, so if you want to do, if you want to get up one day and start making some music, go for it. If the next day you want to get up and make some movies or some short films or whatever to put up on YouTube, you go for it, mm -hmm. right? We have all these abilities and we have all these tools. So you're only now limited by your imagination. Interesting. And you have another project on the go. Yeah. Uh, called New Music 10. Correct. Um, what's, what's that all about? So this again is uh, like I was saying when I was hanging out with Richard Branson and I, when Richard and I were rolling. Yeah. Um, it's just again listening to the complaints. And one of the complaints that a lot of uh, bands have and a lot of artists have is that it's very difficult to, be, um, d to have their music discovered. iTunes is up to 12 or 13 million songs. Yeah. Which is great, but as you look at the stuff that sells on iTunes, it's Lady Gaga, it's Black Eyed Peas, and mm -hmm. those kind of things. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But it's not like little guys um, that are like who are working hard and trying to put their music out. Sure. So they're having a hard time getting discovery. And I think the internet has done a better job at um, distribution, right? We have uh, iTunes, we have Bandcamp, uh, MySpace is coming yeah. back, right? So we have all these tools for distribution, but we have we don't have enough tools yet for discovery. We have music bloggers right. and things like that, but it's still not enough because there's tons of, because again, it goes back to our conversation, more people are making more stuff now, mm -hmm. right? So these are like independent bands who, um, you know, might be playing in their local pubs or, you yeah. know, going on tour in the Southwest, you know, to local, uh, you know, Greasy Spoons playing their music. Mm -hmm. um, New Music 10 is, is, features these musicians. It's 10, it's music, it's online music's first ever pop-up shop. Right? So every month we're going to put up 10 artists. 10 artists, yeah. Yeah. And different genres, different styles. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the month, we erase the site, all the comments and everything like that, and we put up another 10 fresh, fantastic artists. New Music 10, the world's first online, online pop up shop. Pop up shop. Yeah. For music. Music, yeah. That's fantastic. So, like every month you'd have like 10 new artists. 10 new artists, and you have one month to and get that's in. The, and that's the pop up feature there. Yeah. Well, and it's pop up shops too are like, they're. In real life, you see them on Queen Street in New York City and things like that. Yeah. And they always have limited inventory, which is why we only have the 10 artists. Yeah. And then it's only for a limited time. So you have that one month to kind of get in there and check out what's Check there. out the music, discover yeah. it. Are you able, are you, so is it, is it a place that someone can go on? And so if you're listening, watching this, go to newmusic10.com and it's T-E-N. -E -E yes. It's my show. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so newmusic10.com. So are you able to go on here and like listen to the music before you buy it? You can stream all of it, yeah. So you can... So you're not necessarily buying it? Well, I mean, this is the discovering thing. Discovering it, okay. You're discovering. That's okay. half the battle. Could you buy it? You could buy it too, You yeah. can buy it as well on this site. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So mm -hmm. it really is a discovery channel. That's it, yeah. For, for, for music. That's, it's a megaphone. That's fantastic. And uh, you know, you've already had some people talking about this site. Yeah. Um, ladies or we're talking media? Anyone. Who's talked about it? Uh, it's been mentioned by Alan Cross. Yeah. Uh, CBC did, like, gave us a little shout out. You know okay. what I mean? So yeah. And then a few bloggers as well. Fantastic. And well, ladies. And ladies. Yeah. It was one point that came yeah. up saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, that took a little while on the interview. Well, I, I guess, did you, like, you know, did you watch like the Facebook movie and said, okay, I need, I need to build something for ladies or, or were you really trying to solve <laughs> something big? <laughs> No, uh, um, I think you can't, ultimately when you put something out on the internet, it's up to the audience and the people who are, mm -hmm. who are going to use it to decide how big or small it gets. Yeah. You know what I mean? If people really g gravitate and get behind the idea, mm -hmm. like they did with Facebook, then yeah. it can blow up and have a lot of repercussions. Sure. So really, realistically, the whole point was just kind of throw it out there mm -hmm. and then they're all just more experiments to see if it'll work. Yeah. If we put 10 artists for one month, will people get behind that? Yeah. Will people like the music? Will they download the music? So, you know, uh, I, I guess places like, you know, pop radio, mm -hmm. um, you know, have the ability and, and then all, also artists that have huge backings behind them. You know, someone like you said, a Lady Gaga or Black Eyed Peas, yeah. you know, have huge labels behind them, huge you know, po deep pockets yeah. to be able to promote them, Okay. right? Um, you know, what's the plan with New Music 10? And, and in relation to that, you know, the sample bank in terms of getting the word out about, you know, stuff that really nobody has heard before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you market that um, to, 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 to people, you know, be, especially being, you know, an on, like you said, a, a pop-up store that is online, not at, you know, Queen and Bathurst or wherever yeah, it is. Yeah. 
Well, the beauty with New Music 10 is that the artists um, that are on it for this month, for example, mm -hmm. they really like it because then now they're only competing with nine other artists. Whereas iTunes sure. is like 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. So they are actively also promoting it out to their Facebook groups and their Twitter and all the social media. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a boon for them too because that means now their fans, um, they get a chance to buy their album, but at the same time, mm -hmm. they get through this artist, get to discover new music. Yeah. And that's also one of the things musicians are really good at is just recommending new music. So the musicians are doing some of the work as well. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day too, it's just, if we can provide good quality music, then people will continue to come back, right? It's just the, the level of um, content and the level of uh, quality. Fantastic. Now what role has, you know, what, you know what do you, where do you see the future of New Music 10? Like where do, what do you want to achieve with it you know, this year? This year we just want to basically just establish, like we want to build up our artists. We want to get them to the middle. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very easy when you get into music, whatever, to have the dream of selling out Air Canada Center or sure. um, Ladies or Cocaine or whatever the, the standard uh, beliefs are, right? Yeah. Um, and that's still all very possible and if that's what the artist is going for, then good for them. But mm -hmm. I think what we can do is help get bands and artists to the middle, yeah. which is you're making a comfortable living, your name is out there. Somebody mm. like, like Shad's level is really good right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Just making a solid living off what you're doing, you, you, can, you can get reservations at a table, mm -hmm. at a restaurant, you know what I mean? Those kind of things. What's, uh, um, what is your, you know, are, are you, what, what are you looking for right now? What's the pain point that you're trying to solve right now? Do you need more developers? Are you looking for VC funding right now? Um, you know, what stage are you in with both? You know, let's talk about the Sample Bank first then go, and then go to New Music 10. The Sample Bank, for sure, as it develops, will yeah. need like VC infusion, right? Okay. Just to help it get over the hump and to, because especially as we start to build the, the Sample Bank library itself, mm -hmm. right? We'll have to begin working with different artists mm -hmm. um, and just kind of coordinating all those kind of, uh, just coordinating, working with the artists, working with the, the nerds and the developers, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, New Music 10 is like it's, like, it's not a horse, it's a pony, because it's only it's a pop-up shop and it's 10 bands, so it's a lot more easier. Whereas the Sample Bank is the thoroughbred, right? That's the racehorse. Interesting. So looking, looking for, for some VC funding to help you know, build the awareness. Build the awareness mm -hmm. and then build the, the, the company itself, right? Because yeah. New Music 10, again, is just a, it's more or less like a side project, you know? Um, like how in a band, Mm -hmm. They have just to kind of put out this one album on the side or whatever, but the band, the band is the main, steam, main stage, right? Yeah. Um, and so Sample Bank is going to be the long run, right? And that's okay. where the company will be built. Yeah. And, um, because there's a, there's a greater potential to offer samples and to be involved in different musics, uh, music facets. Mm -hmm. um, and as, like I said, I also mentioned, like samples can be used in advertising, can be used in film. Yeah, so, I was going to ask you about that. What, you know, have you had conversations already with various agencies or, or like you said, entertainment production companies, you know, what's, what's the feedback you're getting from them? There's a lot of positive feedback because again, they need access to samples um, like, you know, like even in a horror movie, that little creak of a door. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things that they need as well. So if we can be then begin to provide um, access, I've had conversations with both entertainment companies and mm -hmm. advertising companies and the feedback is good. Ultimately, now the biggest hump is just providing and building up a sample library that mm -hmm. is wide enough uh, and capable enough of providing these sounds that people are looking for. Something just came into my mind that, you know, um, are you offering, is there an upfront fee uh, to upload a tune or, or a sample to the sample bank? Like if I wanted to upload something, will the sample bank say I'm going to pay you a buck or five bucks for every sample that you upload to our site? It's all sign up is free. So you sign up and you just sign, sign up. up and I can just upload as many tunes, yep. as many as many samples you as long as I own as long yeah. as I own the as yeah. long as I own the music. Because there's there's sites like Fiverr.com yeah. and Grab5.com that you know will you know are, would ba basically pay people to upload services on there. Mm -hmm. You know they don't get paid right away, but if somebody wants it, you know they get paid. Yeah. You know, so I'm just curious if if you've taken a look at that model and said, okay, let's let's tie into already established networks mm -hmm. and say, hey guys, if you want to, you know, we are encouraging you to upload, yeah. you know, so your samples or go out there and start creating samples to upload. I was curious whether or not you're taking a look at, you know, whether it's Fiverr.com or Grab5.com or, you know, going on to like places like Sample Bank's 
sites on Facebook or Twitter mm -hmm. and, and encouraging people to upload as many samples as possible so that you can now start then going to agencies. Yeah, well, this is the thing too, especially with music, mm -hmm. a lot of, like you can't just go to iTunes and upload a song. You have to go through aggregators like TuneCore. Mm -hmm. um, and these can take a cut um, from the band. So rather than have bands and things like that go through another aggregator or take a cut or whatever, we've reduced that, we got rid of that. So if you just want to come to Sample Bank and upload your music, yeah. you can do that. New Music 10, I'm the curator, and so you have to, we, we select, I have a couple of people, including myself, mm -hmm. who select the bands, and then we just reach out to them and then show them how to upload it. But it's much more of an easier process, I think, for now at least, mm -hmm. where we can, you can just come, sign up for your profile, get the, uh, the email with the, uh, the link, click on it, and then just upload your music for free. All the middlemen gone, you just, di people deal directly yeah. with you guys. That's kind of probably be, that's probably the disruptor part right there. So, yeah. cause you can't get rid of too many middlemen, but True. for now we're going to. Well, well how, you know, what, what's the feedback been from you know, labels? You know, what, what do they think? Do they see this as something that will help them initially? Um, or, you know, what's the feedback been from them, if you've received any from them? The labels are just, they're cautious. Mm -hmm. they, they, they see the potential of what we're doing, but at the same time they're like, well, let's wait and see where this goes. Let's see if it becomes something or becomes nothing. Yeah. So they're just in this holding pattern, right? And that tends to be their, their I guess, MO, in terms yeah. of how things work online, right? Once things kind of stabilize, it's like, once they see numbers, once they see traffic, once they see sales, mm -hmm. then they'll jump a little bit more on board. But even then, there's still like, always a little hesitation that they can do it better, or this is not the right way to do it, or we should be charging more, yeah. things like that. Do you, uh, so, you know, just to quickly wrap up, do you, what does the music industry have to do, in your opinion, to catch up with, the speed of technology and the speed of new media? It's embrace innovation. Mm -hmm. um, all the major things from like YouTube, uh, Twitter, MySpace, uh, iTunes, all the major innovations that musicians use in the last couple of years didn't come from the record companies. They mm -hmm. came from outside, even Sample Bank, mm -hmm. right? And um, so just the music companies, if they really want to start embracing the technology, then start embracing innovation and start throwing stuff out there and start experimenting. Mm -hmm. Try something like New Music 10 and if it fails, Throw it out and then start all over again. But just, the, again, the tools are all there. It's mm -hmm. just the vision's not there and the courage is not there. So just having both the vision and the courage to step out and say, all right, let's try something new and let's see what happens.